to the barber, George, though, right? <laughs> George the barber. All right, what's going on, man? Welcome back to yet another King James video. Now, today's video is going to be talking about what I feel like is the best beginner film camera, and I have that camera right now packed in my bag. And, uh, you know, I wanted to make this video today because I feel like there are a lot of people, especially right now, where film is still a very hot kind of trend, uh, people are wanting to get into film without breaking the bank. So I'm going to give you guys my suggestion for the best beginner film camera that I feel like can cover all of the needs that you might need as a photographer. I just said need twice. You can cover everything you need as a photographer. It's a quality piece of gear. It's an affordable piece of gear. And it's something that is going to last a very long time. Now we're gonna get into that here in just a second, but right now, folks, it is 9.20 in the morning. We are on our way to Benicia, California to meet up with a very special guest uh, who's going to be airing on this week's podcast, which is gonna go live on Saturday, folks. I'm recording this on the 7th, and uh, the podcast is gonna go live on the 9th. But I do need to get some gas, folks. By the way, new whip. What do you guys think? I like it. It's a big change up from my last whip. But yeah, I'm gonna go grab some gas and then we are going to head out to Benicia and film this podcast episode. Let's go. What you got for me, dude? Americano. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No problem. I figured I'd get some before going here. How you doing, bro? Good. How are you? Good. Bow. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. I don't know if you're into like amp modeling and stuff, but this this thing, it's called a quad cortex. Mm. You can use it to you can use it to capture your amp. So it does like you mic up your amp. Yeah. And it just basically takes measurements and stuff from your amp. Yeah. Um, and basically creates a, what they call a capture, but it's basically a digital model. Send it, make sure they return your mm -hmm. negatives. One of my favorite. I have it right here. It's still shoots. in the bag. For those of you listening, <laughs> sorry, you can't see that. Look, I haven't even opened the bag. Oh my goodness. Let's open this up right now. 45M Super. And it's yeah. got a faux wood, wood grip. grip. Yeah, and we dope. are literally opening it up right now. Did? No, okay. Oh. <laughs> the 30 minute rule, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, we just finished up the second podcast episode, which is going to be airing on Saturday. I don't know when I'm going to have this particular video uploaded. Hopefully soon. You're watching the video if you're watching this. <laughs> this was, this is, yeah, we were talking. <laughs> but really quick, Mike, the title and topic for this video is the best beginner film camera. And I'm going to talk about that here with you really quick. Okay, yeah. Don't mind. But I want to get your suggestions on what you think is your choice for the best beginner film camera like if you can only pick one um what would that be if i can only pick one okay break let's go grab them real quick if you have yours okay yeah okay, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> 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 like a mp <laughs> bag borrow steel <laughs> my mom doesn't love me. okay i hope that's not true <laughs> she loves me <laughs> okay <laughs> Man, you brought out two of them. You have two? I'm breaking some rules here. Because I'm, I'm talking category. Right. I'm going to talk category. I'm, I'm going to break your rules okay. right out of the gate. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. All right. So I would say the best beginner film camera for me would be the X700. Um, and this is no surprise, I feel like. Everyone knows on the channel this is the camera that I always talk about. But I think for people who are just getting into film too, like having the option to shoot in program mode, but also having the flexibility to have manual mode and a built-in light meter uh, gives a lot of people option to just grow with the camera. You have program mode, uh, which you can set your lens into like the uh, auto setting and then just shoot away. You advance the lever, you load the film, and you 
click the shutter. It's aperture priority, one one thousandth of a second shutter speed, but also just the styling of this camera because I feel like it does kind of have that like classic SLR body. It just looks really sleek and it does look cool. It's like vintage and modern at the same time. At the same time. You can't say that about a lot of cameras. You can't. Yeah. And the, the viewfinder is really big. Like, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's always been one of my favorite viewfinders on a film camera. That's dope. <laughs> As That's when me. it's underexposed, right? It's, it's like underexposed. It warns you that. Yeah, like it gives you some like audible warnings so that you, yeah. you know when you're out shooting and you're underexposed, it'll tell you. Or I think it's a slow shutter speed. Okay. Warning. That's right, slow shutter speed. Yeah, so like, like anything. It's basically be careful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is my choice for the best beginner film camera. Okay, so my choice for the best beginner film camera. I'm gonna first off. I'm gonna right out of the gate. I'm gonna break your rule. I'm not gonna. What do you mean? I'm not gonna pick one camera. I'm gonna yeah. pick a category of cameras. Okay. And that category are autofocus SLRs. Yeah. And here's here's why is many of you who are who want to shoot film maybe have a, a, an entry level DSLR, right? Like a Canon, um, you know, like a Canon Rebel or something like that. And those, if the lenses you have for those systems work for these cameras, like this is the EOS uh, Elon. Yeah. I think it's the 650. Oh no, it's just the Elon, the Elon one. Mm -hmm. But um, your, lens, your lenses for those cameras, assuming it's not like the S one, which is for the smaller sensor size. Right. But right. like if you have like an old 5D or something. Yeah. Right? Right. Those lenses will work for these cameras. Mm. Um, so it's an easy transition. Yeah. Um, also if, and if you don't have one of those cameras is you can, these cameras have manual controls, right. but you can also just turn it into a point and shoot. You yeah. can make it completely auto. It's true. Um, you can make it aperture priority, shutter priority, or a hundred percent auto. Mm -hmm. A lot of them you can, um, well, you can't choose ISO because your film is your ISO, you know, but, right. but, um, you have autofocus. Yeah. Um, and so I think if for a beginner, this is a good, this is a good place to start is yeah. an autofocus, a, a modern ish. Yeah. You know, uh, they're not really modern anymore because they're all like, you know, 20, 20 30 years. years old. Yeah. But a yeah. modern ish autofocus uh, film SLR, I think is a good place to start for a lot of people. I don't mind you breaking that rule because that's, that's really good. Yeah, it's a good, good. it's a good category. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like if you, I started with something like yeah, this. Yeah. Like if you have yeah. Nikon lenses. Yeah. Your Nikon lenses you will go. work. And also in the other direction, if you're using a film camera and you later get a DSLR. Yeah. You know, you, the lenses will translate. Yeah. You know, in, in both directions. All right. Thank you, Mike. Well, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Boop. That's a shutter? Yeah. Wait, what do you do it again? That sounds weird. It doesn't even sound like a camera. There you go. <laughs> but you know, with film in it, it's gonna go because it's winding, you know, so it's gonna yeah. it's gonna have that little extra whatever. Shoot. Yeah. Someone's taking a shower? Oh my God, so we are in the office building uh, where Mike Patton's office is. I just went to the bathroom. He says his place is haunted, so I kind of want to mess with him. <laughs> I want to see if I can like, I don't know, get a scare him or something. I don't know, we're going to try it out. But man, this office building is hella creepy. Like, oh shit, there's people right there. It's super spacious and big, so there's a lot of like reverb. Check this place out. Nerd, dude. 
What are you taking? Just get some. Oh my goodness. Some of it. Okay. This is how we. This is how we do it at Shoot Film Company. <laughs> <laughs> you take a photo of me? Yeah. But I'm ugly. No, oh, come on. <laughs> People uh, love you. Um, well, let's do it out there with the oh, light. Yeah. Do you have time? You have oh, like yeah. five minutes. I got all the time. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Man, I gotta see what that video looks like because I recorded on my phone too. <laughs> even in even in broad daylight, it's like, dude, this place is so scary. So and you did the cop knock too. You were like, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, this is a cool spot. Wait, do people actually use this area for photos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. There's like a, people do it in here. People, uh, there's also a spot out there. You've been up front, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let me. Um, there we go. Right there. Sorry. And then step step this way. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Right there's good. Let me just get some exposure. All right. Put both hands to your side. Shoulders back a little bit. There we go. Left shoulder to me a little bit. There we go. Actually, right shoulder to me. Sorry, wrong shoulder. <laughs> when I'm wearing a hat, it's like I can't be like, yeah, you gotta do this. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let me get a couple. Thank you. See, oh wait, you got it, you got it. You got it. Love it, man. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. All right, guys, so we are back home now and uh, something that I wanted to do before we actually ended the video was just give you guys more options on, you know, what I feel like are the best beginner film cameras that you guys can get started with.